Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another podcast. I'm Chris Collier, the host of The Conquer with Chris, the podcast you don't want to miss. Today, I have a very wonderful guest. Her name's Dawn. Dawn, welcome to the program. Thanks, Chris. I'm glad to be here. Dawn, uh, bef- before we get into your story, tell the people where you are, where you live, the area, country, you li- or world you live in, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of what you do. So I actually live in the United States in Minnesota, so way up north. I'm in the Twin Cities. We're very excited because it's been above freezing for a couple of days uh, now, so spring is on the way. Yay. <laughs> Um, And I am an entrepreneur who was formerly in the corporate world for 30 plus years and have transitioned to being an online entrepreneur. I'm actually a freelance writer is how I make my money as opposed to some of the other coaching or whatever people. There's a lot of ways to make money online. So um, that's what I do is write books. I find a passion and write a uh, find an audience, write a book and sell it to that audience. Wow. 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 Great. Great. By the way, little known fact that, well, you don't know because you don't know me that well, but um, I grew up in, not too far from you in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, yes. So I'm a Michigander uh, by birth, Um, Georgian by address. Um, (laughs) So uh, thank you uh, for joining us on the podcast again. Yeah. And uh, so let, let's go back. So you were in corporate America. Yep. So where did you, you say corporate America. So uh, yeah, what, so pretty big corporations. I worked for General Electric. I worked for General Motors. Way back in the day, I worked for a company called Arthur Anderson, which people probably won't necessarily recognize that name, but it was one of the big four international accounting firms back in the day. So yeah, I've been in, in large corporations. And in most of them in general. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. General Electric, General Motors, um, yep. General Accounting. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, so you did that and I'm taking it. Did you retire from that? No, COVID happened and I, my position was eliminated. Um, as an executive assistant, your primary responsibility is managing your executive's life. But when you're not in the office, really not a lot to manage. So <laughs> the hard truth was is, you know, I, I, they didn't need me anymore um, when we were not in the office. And of course, I really, really loved that job. Um, I worked for a company called Ergotron, which is a fantastic company here in the Twin Cities, Uh, but it just came down to the numbers. And once we had been out of the office for, you know, three, four months, and it was clear that things weren't gonna go back to normal, they had to make some tough decisions. So I'm hoping someday to go back because I loved the culture, I loved the company, And what I do for my online business, my freelance writing can be scaled up or scaled down as my life requires. And I just, I I really miss some of the friends that I made there. So we'll see what happens. Gotcha. So um, I I think for you is the the biggest thing was learning how to pivot, right? Yes. You you had to learn how to pivot when this whole thing went down. you, yeah, it was you, pretty scary. You had a great, uh, what seemed to be a pretty good job, and then you didn't have a job at all. Yes. And then now you found uh, this whole uh, writing uh, thing. That, that's tremendous. Um, mm-hmm. So what kind of topics have you written about? So I actually been writing, uh, freelance writing as a side gig for about 12, 14 years. I, I have always loved to write. Even back in high school, they assign you those essays. I was one of those kids who actually enjoyed those assignments. The other kids hated me. Anyway, yep. uh, mess yep, up that do. grading curve. <laughs> <laughs> but so I've always done that. And I have done it in a variety of capacities as a ghostwriter for other people's books. I've written my own books. The first book that I wrote is still available on Amazon. It's called The App Age. And my passion at the time was as a parent, I did not want my small children with a face in front of a screen for more than half hour a day. Now this is long enough ago that that was just television and computers. I didn't have to deal with smartphones. I don't know how parents do it these days, but anyway. 
that was my passion. And what I discovered is that there are an awful lot of parents out there who would love to follow that passion, but have no idea how to keep their kids busy. Um, so I had a website, um, you know, I did guest posting and I wrote this book that's just chock full of games and ideas and science projects and just a whole variety of stuff um, and sold it to all of these parents that I had uh, formed this relationship with. So that was my first book and my first online business. And after that, it was just a case of, you know, at a certain point, my oldest child is on the autism spectrum, but we wanted her to go to college. So I wrote about how do you find the right fit for a college for a special needs child? Because at that point, that's what I was passionate about. Or, you know, as a woman of a certain age, how do you lose weight? Because that was something I was passionate about for, you know, that period of time. So that's just kind of been the pattern. I find a passion. I do the research because as a freelance writer, when I first started, I worked for something called content mills. So these are the places where you're writing 400 word articles on every subject under the sun. And you have to be able to do the research and have legitimate um, resources and things. Um, so I learned to do that the hard way and just use that in all of my books. So wow. that's, that's kind of the, the uh, mode that I've gotten into and that's what works for me. Okay. So let's, let's do a little, uh, let's do a little uh, scenario here. I'm a King. I'm going to night. I'm going to W. I'm going to W. I'm going to change your title. You're no longer a, uh, w w w uh, a writer, a freelance writer. You're now a pivoting specialist. I like that. A pivoting yeah. specialist. Yeah. Um, sounds, sounds kind of cool. Um, I'm jealous. You're not <laughs> a specialist. Um, <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I mean, when I lost my job, it's not the first time I've lost my job in my lifetime. There have been other businesses that closed or whatever. And you just, you update the resume, you hit the pavement and you find another job. No big deal. Right. And my husband has at various times been out of work, but this is the first time where we've both been out of work at the same time. And that was terrifying because I look at my kids and go, oh my gosh, what if in six months I can't feed you? You know, it, you go right to that panic. Wow. And so I yeah. did not want to wait around and see what happens. I knew that to build an online business, it takes time. You're not gonna make a lot of money in 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. I needed to get right on building my audience, getting out there in front of people, doing podcasts, uh, things like that, to build that so that when my next book publishes, which hopefully will be coming out later this year, um, I have an audience that's gonna buy it and that's gonna bring me the income. Now, happily, my husband has since found a job so we're not dependent on that, but that was a panic moment. And I think that that's part of what forced me to pivot faster than I might have otherwise. So let's say someone's, you know, um, I know we're kind of like, it seems like we're on the out uh, end of the COVID thing, and mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, tell people, man, but that doesn't mean people are safe because mm -hmm. this is something we don't realize is like when something like that happens, like the business that I, I do when I'm not podcasting, it lost 80% for three weeks when COVID mm -hmm. first hit and they almost fell apart. It's a cash company. It doesn't have any debt, but right. they laid off um, all their office staff uh, temporarily so they could keep the business running in the mm -hmm. operations side. And um, they came close to closing. But let me tell you is we haven't seen the end of this because there's what I call the ripple effect. Like for example, we haven't seen the corporations who own lots of property. When I say property, I'm not talking about houses. I'm talking about uh, office complexes, uh, strip malls, major malls, which were already on the decrease uh, because of uh, online ordering. I want you to talk to that person, Don, if you would, who might lose their job next week, might lose their job next month, maybe six months from now they'll lose their job. Tell them how to deal with the panic <laughs> and not succumb to it. Ice cream. Lots of ice cream. That works <laughs> really well when you hit that panic. That's my go-to. But then you're looking for a book. And but I'll then you're, well, yeah, there, there is that. But, you know, in all honesty, you have to allow yourself to feel those emotions, to, to feel that panic. And it's okay. And, and that anxiety and that, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? And give yourself a couple of days 
just to kind of wrap your head around that current situation. But once you've done that, take a look at what's going on around you in the world. What are your skills, your passions, your values? I truly and firmly believe that anyone with the passion and the drive can create a profitable online business if they don't give up and they stick with it for at least a year. There's this big myth that I'm going to, I, I'm passionate about, I don't know, writing books and I'm going to write a book and publish it. And I'm going to be making thousands of dollars in 60 days. And it doesn't work like that. It's not that fast. It is easier than a, than a brick and mortar, but it's not easy and it's not fast. It happens from time to time, but that's lightning in a bottle. That's exactly, you know, if you're somebody who's really social anyway, and you've got a big media presence anyway, just totally unrelated to anything other than just you enjoy doing that and you start a business, you are going to be successful much faster than someone like me who on purpose stayed off of social media because I'm an introvert and I don't like to people a lot all the time. So when I started my very first business, I had to learn how to put myself out there and be comfortable with that. And it took time, but I got there. And other people can too. That's the other thing is there's a lot of fear involved um, in that scenario. And you just have to keep taking steps forward to work through that fear and just keep moving forward. And eventually you will get somewhere. May not um, be where you intended, but you will get somewhere. Right. And I want to tell people that during any downturn, during any economic, social, uh, physical mental, emotional, political downturn, somebody is on the upturn. Mm -hmm. And you just got to watch what's going on. I, I think that's key what you said. You know, um, since you're a pivot specialist, this, this is right in your alley. You pivot. No, you panic. Then you pivot. Position yourself for a positive placement, right? Yeah. Because yeah. You, you have to realize that it's not it's not all bad. There's gonna. There's somebody who's benefiting from this. There's somebody out there benefiting from all this, whatever it is. Yeah. If you're having a bad day mentally, there's someone benefiting, even though you're having a bad day mentally. If you're having a bad day uh, socially, there's someone benefiting while you're having a bad day. So you can't take it personal. You have to take yourself out of the equation a lot of times and then position yourself in a way where you can make a positive impact. Exactly. So um, you, you like to write. Mm-hmm. And um, you're an introvert. Yes. That that makes sense. Writers usually are introverts, yeah. but I'm also an introvert. Okay. But I'm a I'm 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 a hybrid. You okay. get me in a crowd full of a, a, a room, a thousand people, ten thousand people. I think I'd do well. Okay. But you get me in, in a group of like ten people. I don't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, and I, I've been hybrid too. Uh, all of the jobs that I've had are very extroverted jobs. I'm handling people. I'm handling I'm that intermediary kind of thing. Um, and I enjoy them. I do enjoy people. But the thing that fills my bucket that recharges me are individual activities, running, reading, writing, things like that. My dad is recharged by spending time with lots of people. He's an extrovert. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's different. And, and a lot of times when you can get charged up by spending time with a lot of people, even as an introvert, but there comes a discharge to that charge. Mm -hmm. um, one time, uh, one of my other side uh, hustles or side uh, jobs, I'm also a minister. And oh. uh, I preached one time and I preached so hard and so passionately. And I was so charged afterwards that as soon as everyone left, I literally collapsed mm -hmm. and, and, and I fell asleep in a chair. <laughs> everyone else it's left. exhausting. Yes. I, oh, oh it, it was exhausting, but there was so much exhilaration in it too. Yeah. And um, people don't understand that about different things that you do. It may not fit you necessarily the way you were originally designed, but because of a need or because of a desire or because of whatever, um, a position you're placed in, you have to do something. You have to, if you have a job, you have to perform a duty. Mm -hmm. it, like you were an executive assistant. You had to 
take care of that person, right? Mm -hmm. And because you're taking care of that person, end of the day is they had to uh, be taken care of. You had to make sure all their needs were met, whether you felt like, oh, I'm an introvert. I can't do that. <laughs> no, you had to make sure if you wanted that job, you had to make sure yeah, that their right. needs were met. And there were several occasions where I, I looked at my boss and said, you want me to do what? <laughs> sure. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, get Look, up in I a meeting for, and I got talk idea to for people. A, I got a deal for a book for you. Oh, no. Okay. What's your idea? Everything I needed to know about business, I learned by being an executive assistant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got stories. I bet I've you got do. Stories, but I'm not going to share them publicly. So I'm sorry. Oh, you, you, you see, you could you could share one and and not say the company or the. That's picture. true. That's true. I, I could. I could. Would you I, give uh, us one now? I might now? have to think about that. Can I okay. give you one now? Uh, no, but I can give you a rule that I learned. The rule is that when you go to the sales convention, you don't want to be the person everybody's talking about the next morning. <laughs> That's just okay. not a Enough good said. idea. No said. <laughs> no said. Uh, I don't want to be talked about no matter what morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's there. Yeah. never. It, there have been some situations where you just kind of go, really? What were you thinking? Why? Anyway. Yes. Not important. Yes. Not important. So but, yeah. Where can people find you? Uh, so the easiest place to find me probably is on Facebook. That's where I'm most active. So I have a group called Women Coaches and Consultants Growing Our Business. Uh, because as I said, my focus right now is on helping primarily women uh, grow their business. This is a time when a lot of women have been impacted, like we said, about COVID and they're looking for a side gig or something to uh, create some income. And so I'm trying to help them out with my years of experience. Um, while I don't have a coaching program, I do have that Facebook group that I give all kinds of free advice. And uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. And I do have a website as well, uh, if people want to check that out. So and that website will be showing on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> It's called editing. There you go. <laughs> exactly. You know, the, the, you know, a lot of the principles for writing a book fit in social media, right? Yes. Or video creation or any content creation. Publishing a book is very similar to publishing any kind of social media. You have to go through your writing process, your rough draft, your, your, yep. your, 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 your consecutive drafts. And if you're citing sources, where do you get those sources from? So on and so forth. Yep. And if you're going to use a picture, where do you have permission to use the picture? Or, or artwork or whatever it is. Um, is it going to be video or audio or both? Or is it going to be just uh, static on a page? Um, all that stuff matters. And it does. It, at the end of the day, is um, it's very similar. So you have all the tools to be a social media giant if you, you choose to be. <laughs> Not saying <laughs> that's you want a scary to be. thought. That's a scary. Well, you know, I will say my Facebook group has grown faster and further than I ever expected when I started. I'm over 700 members now and I've only been doing it for I think 5 months now. So Wait a second now. Hold, hold on a second, Don. I I, I got to <laughs> say this here. Okay. You've been doing it. We'll call it 8 months. Okay. 8 months and you have se 7 months. 7 months you have 700 members. Yes. It's 100 a month roughly. Roughly, yes. And let me tell you the power of this, I believe. And this is, besides pivoting, I think in hearing you talk, I picked up on something. You serve people, and, and this is just, this is an equation that I came up with. I'm a, ma a mathematician in my head. Okay. So serving people, when you go to serve people and meet their needs, it creates value. Yes. That's my equation, right? So when you create value subconsciously that creates in them a deficit because they feel they owe you. You're not doing it for that, but no. subconsciously they think they owe you because you've served them. It's just like similar to a waitress who comes to your table and serves you food. You don't owe her anything or him a waiter, a waitress, you don't owe them anything, but because of their service, you serve them a tip. Mm -hmm. That's and, true. And so you're creating value. And so you're going to receive uh, tips. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. And, and, and my recommendation is 
turn your turn turn a turn instead of writing a book, write a course. You have the stuff <laughs> well, to write a course. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, the website that I that I have has a membership portion to it, oh. a paid membership portion to it. And the first month is free, but then it's seventeen dollars a month after that, uh, just because it, it's so hard to give people exactly what they want. So I just kind of gave them everything, including a course that I created that took. I don't know if you're familiar with Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People or not, but it's thirty years old and was not even aware of the internet when it was written. But it's still the the concept are Practical. very valid. Practical information. Practical, right? So I took those kind of basic concepts and tweaked it for the online world and created a course around that. So that's on, wow. on my website, as well as a bunch of articles and videos and other things out there. So people who are just starting out or people who have to pivot from maybe a brick and mortar to an online kind of scenario and don't know what to do, or maybe somebody who's just stuck. So maybe you need help with marketing. Well, you look at the marketing section, or if you need help with I have no idea how to pick a name for my new business, whatever, right? So there's the whole gamut on the website. So that's another way that I make money. Um, and I wanted to price it because that way because people that are new don't have $1,200 to hire a coach, <laughs> <laughs> which seems to be the going rate right now for a lot of coaches. So. Oh, no, that's that's low. <laughs> Is it? Okay, well, it, see, it's there you low. Go. That, you, 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 it's hard to get a course for that much. Um, <laughs> anywho. <clears throat> because you know at the end of the day it's though is I, I didn't say that to bash coaches if you no no this, no and they're worth every penny they're of worth it. every, every penny. single penny it's an investment but and people it is the, this is the this is the hard thing this is the mentality that, that that you have to balance right you want to serve people and meet them where they are however you get so many tire kickers and people that just have bad attitudes Mm -hmm. That um, and when I say bad, bad attitude, if you're listening to this, you're wondering if you have a bad attitude. It probably is you, but I'll, I'll I'll help you understand why it might be you. If you, a person's getting rich off you, no, they're sharing their life with you. So whatever you pay charge, whatever they you get charged for their course or their coaching is not even a tenth of what they need to get paid for that. Mm -hmm. Because you you can't take Don. How many years do you have in the corporate world? Oh, coming up on 30. <laughs> so you can't take Don's 30 years in the corporate world and do that in your little 22-year-old life or 25-year-old life. Even at 40 years old, you, you can't do it because in the corporate world at 10. I'm sorry. You want to start delivering newspapers at 10. And granted, that's still training. But end of the day is um, you can't, you got to pay for their mistakes got to pay for what they lived through, what they understood how this transition, how they had to pivot, learn how to pivot, pivot it, it, not to pivot, because all that's important. Yeah, it, it is. It is. And that's one of the things that I see so many new entrepreneurs completely overlook. They, when they think about investing in the business, they're thinking, you know, computers or software or gadgets or whatever, right? They don't think about investing in themselves and getting a business coach. And I have to say, hands down, the best decision I ever made was to hire a business coach. She moved my business forward in ways I would never have imagined possible. Because like you said, she had all this experience that I just did not have. Wow. And it was phenomenal. And, and I am so thankful for her every single day. Um, but yeah, but on the other hand, I'm not a coach for exactly the reason you just pointed out. I'm not going to put up with the tire kickers. I don't want to spend all my time doing that. I have all this knowledge. I just recorded it and put it out there. And that makes, and now it's passive income. So it's not tied to my time or my energy. It's just there. And, you know, I could get a thousand people to sign up for my website membership. I would never be able to actively coach a thousand people in my life you wouldn't want to <laughs> i wouldn't want to i couldn't provide effective help for them but i can have a website that can provide what they need so that's the other thing i'm i'm pretty passionate about is is passive income wow that's great so we found out where, where you're from yep. and what you do where they can find you what you offer them i just want to thank you for being on it's been fun 
Yeah, it has. Thank you so much. This is great. I want to thank you guys for watching or listening, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, thanks for watching the Conquer with Chris podcast, the podcast you don't want to miss. Please like, subscribe, share, depending on what platform you're on. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so when we upload a new video, you're, you'll be notified. Thank you so much. Have a great day.